Let's see, you still have the periodic table? Yeah. So, um, let's look up again, what's the mass of one mole of neon? Use your periodic table again to find the mass of one mole of neon. supposed to know that. We're supposed to know that the, the periodic table tells you the mass. Uh, if you're working with grams, it tells you the mass. If you're working with moles, it tells you the mass in grams. So we're expected to know that. By the way, remember that the mass of one atom of neon would be 20.1797 AMUs, but we don't use those as often. So the mass of one mole would be 20.1797 grams. Well, then maybe I should write that down. What is the mass of one atom? Of neon. What would the units be? Gram. Now remember. Uh, atomic mass unit? Yeah. So the units here would be? AMU. Right. Here we have only a very, very tiny amount of neon, so we have a tiny little unit of the atomic mass unit. So remember that the number, the, 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 the number mole was purposely designed so that the numerical value here would be the same as the numerical value here. So the periodic table tells you the mass of atoms, and it also tells you the mass of moles. But when you're looking at the mass of moles, it tells you the mass in grams. And when you're looking at the mass of atoms, it tells you the mass in AMUs. So, um, so those, are things, those are things that are very important to know from the periodic table. So all of these mass numbers so in this periodic table, the mass numbers, so this is a different table. In this table, the mass numbers are in the upper left corner. Mm -hmm. We should think of all of these as either being grams for moles or atomic mass units for atoms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an important thing to know. But what a lot of students don't realize is that that means the periodic table is giving us equivalencies. Go ahead and take whatever notes you wanted to in the moment. So what the periodic table is really telling us equivalencies. What it's telling us is that one mole of neon is equivalent to, uh, well, it's equivalent to telling us, yeah, that one mole of neon is equivalent to 20.1797 grams of neon. So there's an equivalency. One mole of neon is the same as 20.1797 grams of neon. Or one atom of neon is equivalent to 20.1797 AMUs of neon. So that's the real useful part of the periodic table that people use all the time in, in the actual lab. They go to those mass numbers, and the mass numbers give them conversion ratios. Because now we can convert between grams and moles, which is a very common conversion, converting between grams and moles. So moral of the story, if you need to convert from grams to moles, you use the numbers from the periodic table to get your equivalency. Or if you need to convert from moles to grams, you use the numbers from the periodic table to get that equivalency. And that comes up all the time. So what would be the equivalency then for helium, say? between moles of helium, what's the equivalency between moles of helium and grams of helium, according to the periodic table? So, one, uh, one mole of helium is 4.1 
So how would I write that here? What number should go here? One, uh, one gram of nitrogen. Uh, and what number goes here? Uh, 14.00674. Now, let's think about that a bit. Do the numbers in the periodic table represent oh, grams so or moles? Sorry. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, take time. So 14.00674 gram of nitrogen is one mole of nitrogen. Good. So what number goes here? 14.00674. Good. And what number in here? One. All right. So I set a trap there. I set a trap because in this case, I put the grams on the right. In this case, I put the grams on the left. But remember, that's the mistake that people make all the time. The mistake that people make is they put the number on the wrong side of the equation. So you've got to really watch out for that mistake. So all the, um, so when you, when you see that number in the periodic table, you should think of it like this. It's 14.00674 grams of nitrogen per mole of nitrogen. It's not 14 moles per gram. It's 14 grams per mole. So it's important to interpret that correctly. Of course, we can also write this You could also write that like this. You can put whatever you want on the top and whatever you want on the bottom, because they're equivalent to each other, so it doesn't matter who you put on the top and who you put on the bottom. You can put whichever is convenient. But the important thing is that the number one has to be where the moles are. And the number from the table has to go where the grams are. So all the numbers in the table represent grams per mole. Okay, so let's say that I've got eight moles of lithium. And the question is to figure out how many grams of lithium we have. So let's try to work that out doing it using uh, the same on paper, using the same techniques that we've been using so far. seem to work out well. What are our starting units here? Um, Eight moles. Yeah. Eight moles of lithium. And our target units? Gram. Yeah, we don't know how many grams yet. That's why they're the targets. All right. Um, and so um, the units that go down here have to be moles of lithium. We cancel these. So on top, we have to put grams of lithium. And then you have to get an equivalency. So you went to the periodic table, and you got this equivalency from the periodic table. 6.941 grams per mole. That means the number one goes on the bottom here, and 6.941 on the top. So we have 8 times 6.941. You got 55.528 yes. grams of lithium. OK. All right, so this is really more unit conversion, in a way. Uh, but you can see this is a little bit trickier because we didn't get the conversion ratio from that back cover. We got it from the periodic table. So we have to realize the periodic table gives us very valuable conversion ratios. The periodic table gives us the way to convert between grams and moles or between moles and grams.